gotta be kidding me. Ah, oh, there he is, the man of the hour. What the heck did you break now? Yeah, what did I break? What did you break? I this didn't thing break doesn't anything. Run. It's not running, buddy. If we were back home, this thing would have been fixed right the first time. Man, I miss living back home. Back when you had quality shops, people that knew what they were doing, confident work. You just take things for granted, don't care about nothing, nobody. Nobody's stuff but they own. Yeah, yeah, don't worry, I'll get it running. You probably just dumped old gas back in it. Oh, blame the customer. You know what, you're a real class act. I'm starting to get mad over this treatment that I'm receiving here. You don't want to see me mad. Oh yeah? Well, you don't want to see me mad. Oh, did you sharpen the blades? Doesn't look like it. Oh jeez, come on kid, you're striking out at me. I sharpened them, Anthony. You should take a closer look. What are you, out of your mind? I just looked at them and they're dull as a butter knife. Go ahead, Anthony, and take a closer look. They are sharp now. <laughs> you know, I don't really believe you, but I believe in second chances. So I'll go down and take a closer look. Fire it up, fire it up. How you doing today? Need to have a word with you. I need to talk to an elk skins. I heard he was the last person to see Anthony. Is he around? Uh, yeah, he's in his office, <laughs> which is the bathroom. It's the next door over. Elk skins! Sheriff's here to see ya! What'd you do, boy? Elk skins, open the door, bud. We need to talk to you. Skins, come on, bud. We need to talk to you. I'll come in there and drag you off that pooper hole, boy. Open up. Cover me. I'm going in. Pterodactyl here. And today's video is going to be on this. You ever seen one of these? <laughs> Half the engine's missing. Where's the top of it? Somebody cut off the crankshaft and stuck a plug in there. No, this is how it's supposed to look. This is a very rare mower. Very rare. This is Brakes and Scrapums Etzel of lawnmower engines. That's right, this is the Etzel of lawnmower engines from Brakes and Scrapum. This is called a Sano Duct mower. And if you listen to the name of it, Sano Duct, Sano meaning sound. So the idea behind this mower was to take everything from the top and put it on the bottom. So the coil and everything is all under here, the recoil. Let me flip it around the other way. See the blower shroud? cut out and what it was supposed to do is reduce sound it was supposed to make it quiet now there is one thing missing there was a cover on here that covered the motor which also helped to make it even quieter it was a short-lived idea and then Briggs had a recall on it now there were two companies that were selling these when they did make them Lawn Boy and JC Pennies. Now this one we got is a Pennies one. This is a 24 inch mower. It's got a 24 inch blade on it. This is the original air cleaner. Cause as you can tell, it's got this little piece fabbed on there. We're gonna try to get the cover for it. We got this mower from Superfan, Uncle Pat. You may remember Uncle Pat. He's, he's got a huge collection of vintage stuff. He went to Eden, New York to pick this up. He just recently got it. This is a 1960, I don't know if I mentioned that, 1960 Sano Duck mower. Now the company that was making them, making the decks for JC Pennies is this company here. Part of the tag is missing. Power equipment, it might have said company. Out of Cicero, 
Indiana. So that's, you know, not far from Podunk. So we're going to try to get this thing running. And I say try. Now I do have a manual which we'll bring out later in the video that has a parts breakdown of this. So the first thing I want to do is I want to give it a bath. So I'm going to gently, so I don't blast off a bunch of stuff, I'm going to gently pressure wash this thing and I'm going to pressure, give it a good pressure scrubbing under here. And uh, Hopefully, if I can get some lubricant or something sprayed in there, we might be able to free up this recoil. Because here's the recoil, and it's it's not retracting, but it is spinning over. So that's a good sign. And if we can get the cover, might be able to restore this thing and make it look like uh, new again, which would be kind of cool because it's so rare. But yeah, see, it's spinning over. There's a, just a bunch of crap in there. So when this thing is running, it would actually pull the air across the engine. That's what this little duct is, this little sound duct. So as it's running, it's pulling air to keep it air cooled. And from what I understand, the reason they started recalling them is, I guess some of them were starting on fire with that cover on there trapping the heat. Now another little tidbit, I'm gonna tell you which I got this bit of information from my brother Farrell, is that in the early 80s, Honda kinda tried to do the same thing with one of their mowers, and we'll show you some pictures of that. It's called the HRS 21, and it, it was short-lived too. It had a GXV 110, Honda engine on it and it basically was the same principle they were trying to use the deck as like a sound baffle to make the mower quieter so we all know like nowadays the quietest mower you can get is one of these battery powered lawnmowers because that's the way everything is going but let's see if we can get this piece of history the Etzel of lawnmowers going again so let me get let me get it cleaned up and see if we can get that recoil working so we can see if it's got any spark and we'll go from there. cleaned up now we can kind of get an idea of what the original color scheme was and it looks like it was some kind of tan or beige and yellow which is you know kind of an ugly color scheme but I kind of like it too in that fact so let's uh, do a little little more inspecting at least it'd be easy to change the points condenser if we had to do that let's take a peek in the gas tank Look at that, the cap comes off. I figured it might have been rusted on there. All right, I don't know if it's rusted through. It feels pretty solid. It takes the standard, looks like Briggs fuel pump diaphragm. This air filter looks like it might be a crawler or like a Kroller 4 horse, like a K91 air filter. Looks like it takes a standard diaphragm. It looks like one of their standard carburetors on here. So they just, this is a three horsepower. I don't know if I mentioned that. A little underpowered for a 24 inch mower, but that's what they used to use back in the day low horsepower. It doesn't seem to have any dinosaur juice in it. 
or dinosaur syrup. And what's in there looks like it's thick as tar. Um, Want to be able to get that recoil working so we can check for compression. It may, uh, may have a stuck valve, may need a valve job, I don't know. But now that I got this off, I'll get all this water out of here. I'll blow all this off real good. And then I'm going to flip it up and try to shoot some lubricant down through that sano duct system. And maybe if we can get some lubrication to that recoil assembly, maybe we can get it freed up and we can proceed. All right. So there's the coil right here down in there and you can see the end of the rope right there and then there's some kind of ball bearings in here this part right here so I'm gonna spray a bunch of WD-40 in there and see if we can get this thing kind of freed up I think I'll do that a few more times. I think I'll take the plug out and I'll spray some WD-40 down there too. Down the plug hole. It's pulling kind of hard. Who knows, maybe it got tipped up and look at the plug. Looks like it might have been using some oil. Look at this old plug, an L10S. It's like the original plug. Maybe it's still good. Maybe we can reuse it over. That way we can keep, keep as much originality to it as possible. All right, let me spray some more stuff in here. this thing's got no spark but we're gonna check anyway so I got the spark tester hooked up see anything mr. cameraman I can't see from back here so I'm gonna take that points cover off and we'll see what's going on under there they're all corroded and nasty. Little water got under there from the pressure scrubbing. So let's see if they open and close. No, they're not opening and closing. So this points plunger is probably stuck. So I'm going to take this off. And if you've watched any of my other videos, I show you how to replace these points. 
So it's just standard Briggs points. They're pretty nasty. So we'll replace them. Put some new ones in. Now these are so old that they got a, a nut on there. You know, the new one's got a spring. I broke that little wire. That's all right, we're not using these anyway. Let me see if this point plunger will come out. Yeah, it's stuck. It won't move. All right. Hopefully I can get that out without breaking it. I got a good pair of pliers here. I love these pliers. I've been using a lot of these pliers a lot that I got from Dennis. I believe these came from Dennis, or these might have came from another fan. No, I think these came from another fan. Your name escapes me right now. This came from Dennis, Colin. These pliers came from another fan. I love these pliers. Let me put my light on this side. There we go. Yeah, it broke. It broke. That's not good. That is not good. All right, I'm gonna have to try to try to drill that out. Oh, those are on there tight too. All right, I'll try to drill what's left of that point plunger out of there. All right, so I need to figure out what size drill to use. So that's why you gotta have a drill gauge. And it looks like 3 16 So I get a 3 16 drill bit. And Ginger Lee, that's not the name of my girlfriend, Ginger Lee. Ginger Lee, I'm gonna try to drill that points plunger out. Luckily I had a long 3 16 drill bit but when I went to drill it out, it kind of walked on me. And look what I did, I boogered up the plunger hole. It's all sloppy. Now, luckily, I've got the brakes and scrap them. Reamer and finish reamer to repair the plunger hole. They made reamers back in the day. The only thing is I don't have any of the bushings and the bushings no longer available. So of course I went to the inner screen and went to eBay, Flea Bay, and I found there was a bunch of them on there. So I had bought three. Some guy was selling a, a box of three of the bushings. So I'll ream this, put a bushing in there and we'll get that back to new again. But in the meantime, let's just get spark. I mean, I can leave it in there, it ain't gonna hurt nothing. So when I drilled it out and I was blowing it out, it blew this cap off. And then I cleaned it out in there because it was all nasty. And then I took a toothpick, uh-oh, money's here. I took this toothpick, I took this popsicle stick and I taped a piece of sandpaper to it and I held it on that lobe and we pulled on the rope and it cleaned up this lobe. So now I can put this back together. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put the points in it and then we're gonna see if we get spark. Cause it's easy now, you know, it's just got a cover on there. So when I get the, the bushing, I'll go ahead and take this back apart and I'll fix that, that plunger. So that's no problem. We want to see if this thing is going to run. Okay, let's see if our points will open and close now. There they go, see? So we want them at their widest point. And then I got my 20,000 feeler gauge. Yeah, that's good. All right, so now I'll clean them with some paper. Let's make sure they close. Oh, it went too far. There they go. Give them a little snap. 
This paper towel ought to work. And we'll see if we got some spark. Oh, come here, your little points. I get some of the stuff out of here. Now, concentrate on that spark tester. See if we can give a little hoot and holler. Good, all right, then that means I can go back and fix that plunger as soon as that bushing comes in. We'll film that too. All right, now, where is that original spark plug? I'm gonna clean up this plug. And I'm gonna stick it in there. We're gonna spray some dinosaur juice in there. See if we can get it to lick off. got my favorite dental tool I like this one maybe you can find yourself some the flea market I like these ones with the flat spoon on there so I can get down in that part of the plug this this tool works great for a lot of stuff other than cleaning your teeth sometimes I clean my teeth with it if I get something stuck in there you know, like a eating popcorn or some gummy worms get stuck in my teeth. Mm. And then I'll spray it out with some uh, carb spray and we'll blow it out real good. All right, let's spray some of this in there. See if we can get the lick off. It's hard to tell with my compression type gauge hands if this thing's got compression because it's kind of hard to pull I think from all that weight being underneath there like I said we might have to do a valve job to it oh there's some smoke came out plus I sprayed all that WD-40 in there uh oh sounded like it wanted to go oh it's coughing What? I think most of that's WD-40 though. Let me try spraying some of this right in the spark plug hole. Or this plug might be bad too. I might have to just put a new plug in it. Can we get it started? tester. I know, I know. Huh. Should have enough to start. You know what? It was real low on oil too. Let me fill it up. I'm gonna I'm gonna pour some sea foam in there. And then 
then I'm going to put the oil on top of it. It's got plenty of compression, and I filled it up. I put a lot of sea foam in it, and then I filled the rest of it with some 5W30. I wanted some light oil in there. So let's try this again. It is alive! It will live again! It's going to live again! I think I sprayed too much. Well, get the carburetor cleaned up. And, uh... Let's try this 60-year-old spark plug, or 62-year-old spark plug. This mower is a year older than me. Yeah, you can see right here, it already started to pump a lot of oil into this compartment. So yeah, we're gonna have to get that fixed. Let's try it with the old 60, uh, two-year-old spark plug. Yeah! Woo! All right. Well, next, we're gonna pull the carburetor off. We'll have this thing running again. Isn't that something? It's amazing, isn't it? You're amazing, Carol. I know, I know I'm amazing. Check out my shirt. You like my shirt? You know where this shirt would look good? On you. That's right, grass rat. You. You need to get one of these shirts. And a spark plug necklace. Hey, go to our web store, check it out. Okay, so I pulled this apart so you could see underneath there. I pulled that sono duct off of there. So here's your recoil. Your traditional brakes and scrap them, recoil, your tapered shaft, your flywheel key is on here, your standard Briggs flywheel key. The only difference is the end of this crank is left-handed threads because they don't want the, the blade coming off. So this sono duct has the magnets built into it. So this sono duct is your flywheel and your starter clutch. It's got the typical starter clutch with the balls in it. So I took that all apart and cleaned it out real good. And we'll put it all back together. There's your dinner on that. Okay, when we left off on this, I needed to get the bushings for the plunger hole because I ruined it when I tried to drill out that plunger. And I, wait, what are you looking at? What are you, why are you staring at me like that? Oh, you notice? <laughs> I went and got my hair done. Yeah, I was getting all matted and knotted up back there. So I went to the salon and look, my locks. Ha, <laughs> free flowing locks now. So I ordered these Friday when we filmed on this, and man, they came fast. They came Monday afternoon, it's Monday afternoon now. So like I said, I went on, on Flea Bay and found a seller with three of them, and they came fast. So that's what that plunger bushing looks like. And there's the number in case you wanna do this to yours, but you gotta have the reamers. So in order for me to access this a straight shot, 
which is probably what I should have did when I was grilling it out, but still the grill was kind of walking. I noticed, look, there's a bunch of crap all built up in here. So I'm going to pull this cover off too and clean all this all this build up. So whoever had this mower was using it but I think this might have been another issue with this design. I don't know if they just uh, designed that thing and kind of rushed it out into the market. Not foreseen all these issues where it's packing up but you know it's an air cooled engine it's got to cool itself so these fins got to be clear so we're going to be taking the carburetor off because I got to rebuild that so I'll get all this cleaned out but for now we're going to ream this ream this uh, plunger hole so I got to put my spectacles on and get the right reamer the one we need to start with is a part number 19056. And the other finish reamer is 19058. And then you got to have the tool that drives it. And that is 19057. So you got 19056, 57, and 58. And they want you to do it by hand. They don't want you to put this in a drill. And in the manual, they tell you to take the crankshaft out, but we're not going to do that. That's crazy talk. <laughs> so, I'm going to blow some air in there and it's going to pop this cap off. And I've got a tap handle and we're going to go in and ream this out. Now the reason they probably want you to take the crankshaft out, another reason, is so you can ream it all the way through. But we just want to get the bushing in there. So the bushing may be a little long because see we can only go so far because we're hitting a crankshaft so I'm probably gonna have to cut some of the bushing off because I'm not taking a crankshaft off to do this repair that's a lot of work so I'll drive the bushing in as far as it'll go and then I'll just have to cut off the end of it or maybe I'll just cut it, figure it out, and cut it off ahead of time. All right, so let's see if I can figure this out. The ideal thing to do would, if I had another one of these reamers, would be to cut this pilot off, and then I'd be able to ream it all the way through. Because let's see, that, yeah, that goes almost the full length. And we're going in that far. So actually, we're only going to need about this much of that bushing. So I'm going to mark this bushing, I'm going to pre-cut it, so that way I don't have to try to cut it when it's in there. And we should be good to go. Okay, I cut it down. I'm going to save that little piece I cut off. It's not like I'm going to be using a lot of these, but now that we're doing more and more of this antique stuff, it's good to have some of this stuff around now. So now I got the driver. So I probably should have cut it a little shorter. I thought I had it worked out. I know this isn't going to fit in there because I mushroomed it. Yeah, that's what, oh it does fit in there. So 
So I may not even have to finish ream it. But I'm still going to have to grind off that little bit of that head on there. Let me get the finish reamer out. Whoop. Yeah. Maybe I can ream that little bit of that top off with the finish reamer. I got two more of them bushings, so if I mess it up, because it's discontinued them bushings. I think I mentioned that in the other video, or in the other segment. No, I think I'll, uh, to be safe, I think I'll sand that down a little bit. Let me get one of my many tools to sand that down. All right, I got it all smoothed down. There's our plunger. Fits in there a lot better. So I have to go ahead and put the points back in, regap them, and put that plug back in. And uh, now we won't have to worry about any oil coming out of there. So next we're going to pull the carburetor off and pull that apart so we can take a look inside what we got to do for that, get it rebuilt, and uh, get this thing to run on its own. And then maybe cut some grass with it. Cut some grass with it. Okay, now we're going to be removing the carburetor. And then this little, oh look at that, got a little Star Wars around there. And then that way, got more of this stuff off. I can better clean all this cooling fins out. I'll take this baffle off, like I said. I did oil the cable. So that's, that's working with our gel lube which we sell in our online store. Now it moves real free. So I lubed that up real good. And that hooks into here. So this is our throttle, chokes it. But this is all sticky too. You know, for our governor. So that's why I gotta get all this nastiness out of there. Get everything freed up. Okay, we got, looks like something we got here. What is that? 5 sixteenths. Looks like it's got a slot for a screwdriver. Or am I wrong? I'm wrong. Well, no. There it is. Yep. Take that out. And let's see what we got to do to get this off. So there's a link here. Here's our kill switch wire. So I'll push that tab back, release that. And now we just need to get this link disconnected without breaking anything. There we go. Woo! Got that out. We don't want to lose that. Hope that doesn't come unhooked from underneath there. So now it's moving freer. All right, so this is our crankcase breather vent tube, which on a lot of these would run to here. But this one just points down. So I was curious about that. So I thought, what, did they leave this open? No, this is blocked off. They blocked this off. So that doesn't go anywhere. So let's take this on to the workbench and get it disassembled. So look at this intake manifold gasket. It doesn't look like it's on there correctly. Look at it, it's all kind of smooshed down here and it's not thinking this might have to be flipped over. Who knows, this might have 
Might be the way it is. It's still got yellow paint on there. But I think, you know, for better flow, it's kind of restricting it right here. So I may have to make a gasket. I'll get a razor blade. Let's see if I got one. Yeah. Maybe I can get it off with the razor blade without destroying it. We could try flipping it over and see if it fits better a different way. I don't know. I'd probably just be better off making my own gasket. And that don't look right for some reason. And this this might be asbestos, this gasket. So I'm gonna have to take care not to make any fibers or anything come in the air. I don't wanna kinda use a wire wheel to make dust or that. I'll have to carefully scrape that off. Yeah, I don't like that gasket. I'll just make my own. All right, let's take another look at this diaphragm in here, this fuel pump diaphragm. Oh, that's the driver. No fit. All right, back up, Mr. Cameraman. Here, got a little teeny tiny guy here. I'm sure this diaphragm pump gasket under here is probably hard as a carp. So yeah, remember when you're working on this antique stuff, you know, back in the day, they used to want to put that asbestos in everything. For those of you who don't know, and there's a lot of you out there that do remember, they put it in everything. They thought that was like the miracle product. So then they wanted to stick it in all kinds of stuff. So there's our little cap and our little spring. Here's the cap. Now look at this cap, it's different from the one they got today. One they got today is open in the middle. I think I got one laying around here to show you. For those of you who don't know, some of you are watching it going, yeah, yeah, I know all that, Terrell. This is what that new cap looks like. And this is the old 1960s one. But we're gonna, we're gonna use that over, it's still good. We'll use this and this. We'll use the cap and the spring over. And there's our pump. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that just wore off the end. That's that. That was doing some flapping there for a while. That was pumping, pumping to the point where it just wore it out. So they still make this. We can get this. Now these covers tend to warp sometimes. So what I like to do is just check it to see if it's flat. And I do that by putting a piece of sticky sandpaper on my bench and then hillbilly machine it and then look to see if it's flat. We'll do that when we go to reassemble it because I don't have a piece of sticky paper right now. All right, let's pull the carburetor. Off the fuel tank. And then hopefully I can clean this tank without it rusting a bunch of pinholes through. If it does, then I'm gonna have to seal it, which takes more time. Because, you know, we're racing the clock every week to do these videos, especially on these older, this older equipment, you know, it takes, can't shoot it in one day. It's not like we're replacing a belt on a mower where I'm like, yeah, I got all the parts to do that because it's not 60 years old. So let's see what kind of condition this stuff is in. 
doesn't seem too bad. Now this is supposed to be a little screen on the bottom. And of course, it's got a bunch of crud on it. So hopefully we can clean that up. And then we want to make sure there's no cracks in this pickup tube. So you kind of want to buff it. I'm using a scotch Sprite. You could use sandpaper. And if it had a crack, you would see it. So we got lucky. So how this carburetor works, it works the same as those other ones. When you pull it, it's pulling air across through the carburetor, which makes this thing pump. So then it starts pumping the fuel up, and then it deposits that fuel into here, this little area. And this is like a float bowl. So this long tube goes into the bottom of the tank. Well, it's probably about an eighth, three sixteenths off the bottom of the tank. Pumps up the fuel, and then dumps it dumps the fuel from this hole here should be a hole in here I think yeah there's a hole here which comes from here goes straight across dumps the fuel into this bowl and this is like a float bowl and at the top of here is a little cutout so when this thing gets running this fuel pump starts pumping the fuel and it fills up that bowl, and then when the bowl gets full, the little cutout that's in here, here it is, it's somewhere in here, there's a little cutout at the top, and then that excess fuel just goes back into the tank, so it just kind of recirculates. And then the fuel is picked up through this tube, which has got your high-speed adjustment on it. And that meters the amount of fuel that gets sprayed into the carburetor here, which gets mixed with the air and the fuel and takes it into the intake valve. So that's how the carburetor works. Once you know how it works, then you can figure it out. So we got to make sure that none of this stuff, none of these little passages are plugged up. Because you can see how this tube is in line with this. And then this is drilled to come to here. And then it just dumps the fuel into there. So as long as all these passages are clear, we'll be good to go. I'll pull this out, and then behind it is a little brass fitting that's got a hole in the center. And then there should be two holes behind that brass thing. So let me get that out. All right, get out of the way. See, they've used this design on many carburetors they got. It's just, you might have a bigger tank, a smaller tank. It might be on a vertical, it might be on a horizontal. It's on those five horse Briggs's like that engine over there. Same design. Let me find that carburetor. Where's it at? What happened to this car? Here it is. Same thing. Basically the same thing, it's just on a five horse, got a longer tube. This one's from 1973. It's got an adjustment. And I think they continued this design all the way up to like 1999 or 2000. Simple, basic, that's what you want. So that's how it works. This is a regular special brakes and scrap them screwdriver. This thing's probably about 60 years old too, this screwdriver. If it ain't 60, it's at least 50. So we're gonna pull that out. 
it's clear it's got no it's not plugged up and then again like I said there's two little holes behind here one holes bigger than the other so now that I got it all disassembled to this stage I'll put it in a parts washer clean it all up real nice and clean this is where that part of the this pump diaphragm see that went there so this has got to be nice and flat it's kind of raised up it's kind of boogered up so I'll carefully clean that see it's cleaning up already with this razor blade and that looks like the same tank gasket that went on that carbon trailer I just showed you looks like it uses the same one that that five horse uses yep look at that it uses the same one I've got these so the only other only other issue is going to be cleaning the tank and hoping that it's not rotted through there is some crud in there so once I get it all cleaned up get it all put back together put some dinosaur juice in there we should be able to get that thing to run on its own then we'll go see if we can cut some grass before it starts snowing. You like my shirt? I like it too. And you know what it would look good on? It would look good on you. <laughs> it's not the space shuttle, it's a lawnmower. Woo! And you can get yours today at tarotfixesall.com. Yeah! Except we'll send you a clean one. Mine's all dirty. All right, well, I pulled this baffle off of here, this deflector. And as you can see from the picture we're gonna show, this thing was all packed. And it was all packed up and out in here. This is what I scraped out of there. So here's the air vein, governor. Let me grab the little link. You can see it in there, flapping around. And there's more nastiness down there. So I'm gonna clean all this out and get some some gunk, engine gunk, and some other cleaners, and we'll get that all cleaned up. All right, I got the carburetor all cleaned up. Look, it turned out good. Cleaned up real nice. I got this all smooth. Got this all cleaned up. The screens are still intact. I was able to clean them. I blew through everything. Everything's clear, ready to go. We just got to put it back together. Here's our uh, fuel pump diaphragm plate. It's nice and flat now. And I usually just take a piece of sandpaper like this and this is some 400 grit. Just to make sure that this is flat because sometimes these will warp. I got the new gasket. Now I said before that this gasket didn't fit on there very well, but this is the gasket that fits on the engine block. So I gotta use this gasket over. Well, I'm not using it over, but I mean I gotta use a new one just like it. Here's the old one, which is going in the garbage. And here's the new one. 27909 is the part number. I got our new tank gasket and I got our new diaphragm somewhere what happened to it oh here it is new diaphragm and a new air filter which I said was the same as a K91 and that's what it is same as a K91 crawler. So this, all that old stuff can go in the garbage. Now, the fuel tank. Just like on the uh, Power King, 
once I got all the rust out, and we'll show you the pictures, it had a bunch of pinholes in the bottom. So there's a lot of ways to do these tanks, and I've done just about all of them. I would have used pour 15 like I did on the Power King, but I ran out of pour 15. By the time I ordered it and got it into the shop, there wouldn't have been enough time to finish this video. And it had a lot of pinholes. So what I would have done with the 415, which they tell you in the instructions, is I would have put duct tape on the bottom of here, poured the 415 in there, swirled it around, dumped it out, let it dry, pulled the tape off, it would have sealed up all those pinholes, and then I would have painted over it again with the 415, probably three or four coats. But since I didn't have time, I could have used our taro putty on it, but I thought, you know, let me try something else. So I soldered it. So I soldered up all the holes. So this is where all the pinholes were that I found. So I soldered it up and I used this solder. This is 50-50. 50% lead, 50% tin, and 2% is flux. There's flux in here. And it's real simple to do. I just use a propane torch, warmed up the tank with the torch, and then just fed the solder into it. Then I used red coat fuel tank liner. Only because this stuff dries pretty fast because we need to get this project done. So yeah, I've used the 415. That works great. I like using that stuff. It's real hard. I've used the red coat. I've used the taro putty, solder. There's many ways to seal a tank. So now the tank's ready. So now I'll reassemble the tank. We'll put some dinosaur juice in there. I'll get that all clean, spippy, and uh, it'll be time to you know. Just like in this video. Fire it up! Fire it up! Fire it up! Shut it down! Okay, it's all back together. Now, sometimes it takes a bunch of pulls to pull this thing to get the fuel pumped up. Um, I could speed it along by giving a little help with some carb spray if I have to. Well, let me see if I can get it to start on its own. I choked it again. I think it would have stayed running. Try it again. Try giving it a little help. See if it's a fuel issue.
the whole point of this design is it's supposed to be quieter. It don't sound any quieter than a regular lawnmower. No wonder they scrapped this idea. They should have scrapped it before they even tried to sell it. Let's take it out, cut some grass with it. I'm gonna put the air cleaner on there. And uh, I might have to open the screw a little bit. And then, of course it was burning a bunch of crap off of there. I'm gonna get it nice and hot and change that oil, dinosaur syrup. Check those screws. Seems to be weeping a little bit. Might have to double up the tank gaskets. And then we'll go uh, see how it cuts grass. Huh, sano duck. adjustment screw I left it alone I didn't I didn't open it I didn't close it when I rebuilt the carver trader I just took it off by the nut as you've seen in the video because I wanted to see if it would run at the setting that it had without me messing with it and uh, it runs at that setting I think a lot of this leaking is with gas tap yeah oh yeah The little gasket's gone. Uh-oh. You know who's calling? Hey, <laughs> money. Let me see if I can find a gasket or a gas cap so we can get it to quit leaking and we'll go cut some grass after I answer the phone. I'm going to hold on to this cap in case, in case we decide to restore this thing. Because if we can get the cover for it, I want to see if that quiets it down any too. Because I don't know anything about the cover, if it's got like sound baffling material inside the cover. But if we're going to keep it original, I'm going to hold on to the original cap. We could sandblast it and put a gasket in it later. So I'm just going to put a new cap on it for now. And uh, let's take this thing out and see if it'll cut some grass but yeah it, it seems to me like this was a colossal failure but you know all companies have failures just some have more failures than others Well, there you have it. 
60 some year old lawnmower, very rare because it's a POF, a piece of fecal, engineered by brakes and scrap them. I can understand why they uh, discontinued it. It's real hard to pull. You know, it's not like a conventional mower. And I think a lot of it has to do with all that weight they got on the bottom. You know, it's not distributed equally, I think. Where you would have the flywheel and everything up top and that weight and the blade weight on the bottom. Because, I mean, it's... I mean, I cleaned and lubricated it. And it's... It takes some strength to pull that thing. That, that would been another drawback. I don't know why they just didn't abandon the idea totally, but... Probably had a lot of money invested in this design and decided to follow through with it. And hey, now it's a piece of history. It's probably worth a lot of money restored. The only way I'm going to restore this is if we have the cover. Because it's not going to be complete without that cover that goes on there. It cuts 24 inch, underpowered, three horsepower, but all the mowers back in the day were underpowered like that three horsepower. Now you got all these 22 inch push mowers that got six and seven horsepower engines on them. And this is like three. But hey, it survived. And whoever had it used the crap out of it. Because you can see all that build up under there. That's another drawback. You know, you're putting all that ignition and everything all underneath there where the grass is. That was the problem with the Honda too. But we got it running. It runs again. It lives again. I know Uncle Pat's happy. He's going to try to get the cover from the people he bought it from. So, subscribe to this YouTube channel, Terrell Fixes All. I'm Crazy Terrell, getting this old POF running. Go to our web store, buy some of our merchandise, like this sweatshirt. It's a little cool out today, and I'm toasty warm with this sweatshirt on. And get yourself one of these, a spark plug necklace. <laughs> Shut her down! Shut her down! Shut her down! We won't send you one that's fouled. We got all kinds of other shirts. We got the Dinosaur Juice shirt. That's a nice shirt. I like that one. Check out all the stuff we got for sale. Maybe there's something there you want. Follow me with your obsolete recalled pieces of fecal on Facebook and Instagram. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! J.C. Penny son of Doc. What a piece of crap. But hey, they said that about the uh, Dodd Superbird too. And look at how much money they're getting for them things. <laughs> Etzel. Breaks and scrappings. Or break and scrappings. Etzel right here. I got one. Well, I got to give it back to Pat. But it's here. It's here for now. Okay, I went and changed the oil in it already that it was hot, got all that sea foam and that out of it. So I bet you're curious to see if that bushing I put in there is leaking. So let's take a look. Ready? Ready? Aha, look, no oil. None came up there. Good as new again. Oh, 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 it smells like a homicide in there. Oh no, I know a homicide when I smell one. Oh, that's, that's hey. oh, oh, guys. What are you guys doing? Oh, we're looking for elk skins. You've seen them? No, I haven't, but if I do, uh, I'll let you know. Yes, definitely. Notify us immediately. I would check the rest of the grounds, but I'm kind of hungry. I'm going to hit up Duckman's. You have a good one. All right, you too. Hey, get a number two. That's always my favorite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How can you be hungry after smelling that number two? Uh. Mm -hmm. for you kid the sheriff was just here I'm gonna call him and let him know that you're here all right Cause you're a wanted man I don't think so fire it up fire it up Get control!
I don't think so. Fire it up! Fire it up! Shut it down! Fire it up! 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 Shut it down! for the murder of Anthony Scarpetrator. It's still leaking, and he said you replaced the original with a cheap knockoff. Is this true? It's not my fault he has water in his gas and leaving his cans outside. Yeah, that's what they all say. Come on. What? No. no. Come on. No. no. Just quit resisting. I hate to say it, but I might need your help. Cruiser ain't been starting like he used to. I might need you to say fire it up. No deal. Oh, come on. Maybe we can work something out. We'll see what we can do. Come on. Don't worry, everything's gonna be all right. Hey, Ossifer, Ossifer, hey! Hey, is he gonna be back Monday morning? I got bullets that need to be fixed. <laughs>